Uh, hello everyone, um, today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to export an object from one map and then import it into a different map using Giant Editor. Specifically this is going to be an object with functions so it's a little bit more involved um, with your mod desk XML and scripting. So going to import the object into states but I'm going to export it from a small town America. So first of all we need to open up the map in Giants Editor by clicking on the O3D file. This takes a little while sometimes. Don't panic if it comes up with not responding. It will eventually come to life. Here we go. So first off we need to have a look around and find what we want. Now I don't have to go very far luckily because this is the shed that I require. So we click on the shed and it's highlighted here in the cinegraph. So with it highlighted all we need to do really here is just go file export selection with files. This is important. Do not click export selection on its own. It must be exported with all of its files. So if we click on this, and then I'm just going to create a new folder on my desktop and call it Shed. And then I will call the i3d file Shed. Keep it nice and simple. And then open the new cr newly created folder and save my i3d file in there. Now what you want to do is just have a quick look here while you're in this map uh, where you're removing or exporting your object from um, and have a look within the user attributes to make sure that everything is intact and also you can then compare this to what you get once you've imported it into your other map. Um, so just literally go through all your triggers and see what it actually says and what other attributes are there just in case for some reason they're not brought across um, you can create them yourself or you may need to export um, and then re-import because there may have been uh, an error somewhere in the um, process. So just a quick look over to see what's in here and then pretty much we're done with this map because I don't really need to do anything else here so I can exit out of that and make sure you click no to save changes um, we've only moved the camera so it wouldn't really matter that much but you know just to be on the safe side click no so now what we need to do is we've done with this so we can close that folder and we have our newly created folder with our shed i3d here on our desktop so in our states map folder uh, I've already um, extracted this with WinRAR so you will need to do that obviously um, to edit anything within. We need to go into the map folder where our map i3t is and we're going to bring across our newly created shed folder and place it within this uh, area. So I will go Control X to cut and then paste to bring it in and I'll just click refresh so it's easier to uh, put it into uh, alpha numeric order so I know where it is. Uh, then we're going to open up our states map again with the map i3d so we double click this. Again takes a little while for Giant Editor to start up and we're in. So now what we need to do is find a place on our map where we would like to put this um, object that we've exported and we're now going to import so have a look around see where you think no I'm just going to go straight forward simple I'm going to put it here so pole barn there's no functions to this barn at all um, so we can just delete so either delete on the keyboard or you could go up here and delete it but delete on the keyboard's easier um, so file and then import and then we obviously want to go into our um, states map map folder and then into our map folder 
and then look for your fo folder with your i3d which is shed and then we just double click on the shed i3d and it will import it somewhere random on the map so making sure it's highlighted within the cinegraph otherwise you could be moving something random on the on the map by accident we just drag and move it around wherever we need to and that's really annoying when it does that this can take a little bit of time to get things where you want them to be and you know um, you may need to go into the game have a play around see if you like it come back out go back into the editor and get it exactly where you want it but you know for the most part it's not too bad so I we'll want to move this around so I'm just going to rotate it uh, just make sure I'm going to be on the right axis here so I'm going to go minus 90 so it's set up um, against the road here and we'll lower it down a bit Move your camera around where you need to so you can uh, get it where you want it to be. And just where it's starting to clip into the floor is usually around about right. Somewhere there's probably okay. Um, you're triggers that you have um, obviously this box here is your trigger for the door uh, if you have it too close to the, the road every time you drive past the doors going to open this might not bother you but it does me sometimes so I like to keep them a little ways from the uh, from the road or you know so it's not constantly opening and closing and opening and closing now this has actually been scaled down this um, shed so I'm going to have a bit of a play around with it and just see if I can't make it a little bit bigger. The uh, reason why I say that is because if you look at this side door, it's shrunken. Um, and even though you can get the trigger to work and the door opens, you can actually get stuck in the doorway because it's so small. So I'm just going to have a bit of a play around here and see if I can get this to be a bit bigger. Um, so we'll go over to our scaling here and we'll just go one and we'll see what we have so yeah it's a bit bigger but I think it could go a little bit bigger than that to be fair so I think I'm going to go 1.2 and there we have it I think that's about right there so again it's just manipulating um, where you want the object to be uh, obviously you know it depends on where you're putting it down where you're placing the object you might not have that sort of space to expand it out like I have so either keep it as it is or play around with the scaling until you get it where you need it to be but like I say uh, when you have if this door was just fixed and it didn't open I wouldn't be bothered it wouldn't bother me at all what size it was but the fact that it opens and you can walk through it I really want it to be the right size so I don't get constantly stuck in it so there we have it so that's really all there is to it it's it's placed on the map now going back to what I said when we were exporting it have a look again in your user attributes and click on your door triggers and just make sure that they actually come up with the same ones that you had when you exported it and this is all looking pretty good so there we have it so now what we can do is just find a place where you're comfortable with I just usually leave it where it is so that if I do have to come in and edit it again I'm already here so we'll just save again this take a little bit of time um, but depending on your system specs can be minutes or sometimes hours uh, so we've, we've done there so we'll exit out of that uh, no I've already saved it so I don't need to save it again I just moved it slightly um, so now we have everything in here what we need to do now is 
go back into our um, small town America folder and there's some changes we need to make within the mod desk XML so I use notepad plus plus but whatever you're comfortable with go with that so we'll open this up in notepad plus plus and what we're looking for here is our extra source files because this is what operates and controls those doors um, on that shed. Now I know the one that we need is this one here, door trigger Lua. So what we'll do is we'll just highlight that and copy it. And then we'll go into our Manchester map here and we'll go into our mod desk and we'll open this in Notepad++ as well. Now it's important that you put these in the right area so it needs to be within the extra source files to extra source files in this area where all your scripts are. So we've copied it over, copied it so into the clipboard so now we go over to our um, states mod desk XML and we're looking for our extra source files. They can be anywhere within here, not necessarily in the same place. Uh, the other ones were right at the top, these ones are somewhat down and we're just going to paste it in so we'll go down and tab across so they're in line and we'll paste it and there we go. Uh, next thing we need to do to we'll save that uh, is to actually find this door trigger Lua script and then copy that across into our states uh, map folder so we go back into map and then into our scripts here we are now you will find that sometimes not all of the scripts are in this particular folder they can be all over the place um, when a map creator puts um, the initial scripts in he or she may put them in the script folder but then as they make changes they'll add another thing like we're doing today with the shed and they'll keep them contained within another folder a subfolder if you like so it's all about where the XML is looking for that script but in this case we're going to try and keep it as simple as possible so we're going to just take it from this script folder I'll just copy that again just in case I didn't do it the first time and we're going to go into our map folder over here and into our scripts um, and then we're just going to paste it over here but what we need to do now is if you noticed on the small town America um, map you've got uh, the script is in folder script but in the states one it's in folder scripts so what we need to do is make sure that our Lua is actually looking or our, our um, extra source file is looking in the correct place because if we left that as it is um, for script it wouldn't be able to find it because there isn't a folder called script or if there is it would be looking in the wrong one so we need to add that S in so that it now knows to look in our scripts folder for that door trigger and that is that so now we can just back out and if we've done everything correctly we can rezip this so we'll select all and I use WinRAR so and I've got mine set to default to zip file so I can just go add to states um, you may find that because you've not changed the defaults when you download and install WinRAR default is set to RAR file so you will need to change that um, 7 zip or other programs will work just as well so um, you don't really need WinRAR whatever you're comfortable with using so we'll just let that um, compress into our zip folder or zip file, whatever you want to call it. Again, depending on what you've got on your map um, and everything else, this can be a timely process. And again, it matters about uh, um, it makes a difference on uh, the speed of your computer, how much RAM you have, etc., etc. So just be patient. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put that into our mods folder. So I will go Control X to cut and then paste and we now have it in our mods folder. To test this function we now need to open up our um, farming simulator. I'll just get rid of those because I don't like them open like that. Uh, it won't matter but um, I just preferences really. Uh, if you open a lot of stuff in Notepad++ you can get really confused quickly if you've got mod desks all across the top of the page. Uh, so just closing them down once you've saved them they're no longer needed to be open so 
close them down just to get them out of the way. So we'll just open up Farming Sim now. And then once this is loaded in, we'll go into our states map, skip all that, go into our career, and we'll find an empty place and uh, we'll go in. You can see that I've already got states running. I've restarted states so many times now. Um, I've played probably over a hundred hours in time game, um, but I keep finding something I want to add or change, so I end up having to start the game again because I make too many changes and the save game won't accept those changes, so ignore that. Um, so we'll just go into save game 12, we'll just choose easy for now, and we'll go into our states map. We'll wait for that to load up. And we're in, so we'll get rid of that, turn that off. So we'll go over to our vehicle here and start this up. Now I have got a G27, but um, because I'm playing around with the keyboard with Giant Setter 2, I'll just turn off the, um, I forget what you call it now, the backwards forward thing, whatever it's called, shuttle mode, that's it, come back to me. Um, just because I'm using the keyboard for a quick demonstration, it's just easier. Uh, so we'll just come over and we'll see if our triggers actually work and voila They work Now we'll just jump out And there we go And like I say This door is quite narrow if you don't expand out the um, Scaling on this building It is meant to be this big It's been scaled down in, in the other map um, and I found that leaving it at that original scale, I would get about this far and then get stuck in the door. Um, so, give it a bit of four-wheel drive there so we don't spin round and round on the spot. And we'll just double check that this door does open as well. And there we go. Door is opening. And this one as well. Excellent. So just to be um, checking all the bits and pieces that we need to check, I just like to see how close I can get on the road here to the door before it will actually activate so that I'm not constantly driving up and down here. And you can see I'm quite close there and the door still hasn't opened. So I could comfortably drive up and down here and not constantly have that door trying to open, close, open, close. Again, it, you know, if it doesn't bother you, don't worry about it. These little things annoy me sometimes, especially if you're on a road or using a road like this constantly, which I class this as my main farm, so I'd be up and down here all the time. Um, so, yeah, there we go. How to export a shed with door triggers and then import it into a different map and set up the triggers in the XML and copying over the triggers into your map folder and joining all the dots together really. I hope this helps anybody who is interested in doing this and thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.